Hi, I'm Kelly Corrigan, and I'm sitting next to Daphne Merkin, whose work you've probably read in the New York Times or the New Yorker or Elle, Travel and Leisure, Vogue, uh, any number of magazines. And what she, you typically do is review books and also these, write these great essays of cultural criticism. So I wonder, before we get into the meat of this, which is when I'm just going to quiz you on people we're all obsessed with, um, tell me, how did you come to be a book critic initially? Um, I wrote book reviews even when I was at college. Um, for the Barnard, I went to Barnard and the Columbia Papers, and then very, very early on, I started writing book reviews, a regular book column when I was 23 for a magazine called The New Leader. Uh-huh. But you're such a wonderful writer. Did you ever think about writing books? I have. Yes. Written a novel, um, and I'm working on a memoir. Great. Great. We'll look forward to it. Right. Okay. So this book, which is so fantastic, and the cover is equally fantastic, um, is all about the people that we are totally obsessed with as a culture. So tell us why. Mike Tyson. I think Mike Tyson really interests people because he seems such a mixture of personal pain, mm -hmm. aggression, mm -hmm. confusion some inadequately socialized primitive impulses. Mm -hmm. I mean like the chewing, biting an yes. ear. But I think if it was only that part of him, the outrageous part of him, he wouldn't be as interesting. He's also, I found, a very reflective man. Uh -huh. Reads a lot, thinks a lot, is in conflict with his He's aware of his Mike Tysonness. Yes, very aware of his Mike Tysonness. Which I don't think is obvious from observing him no. from the outside. And so this is this level of intrigue that he, he's, there's more to him than what we see. Yes, much more to him. And I originally got interested in him when I saw a documentary about him that James Toback made. And I was so struck by the way Tyson spoke about his life mm -hmm. that when I had the opportunity through an agent to meet him, mm -hmm. I was very interested. Mm -hmm. And he was open. He was very open. Yeah. And yes. should we feel sorry for Mike Tyson? Did you did you leave the interaction feeling like there's something tragic about? Yes, yeah. I think he had a an incredibly tough background mm -hmm. in every sense of the word: poverty, abuse, mm -hmm. neglect, mm -hmm. and from that background pulled himself up in a certain kind of way. Does he have an idea about his future? When I spoke to him, which was, I think, a few years ago, he wanted to continue acting. Uh huh. And then he did this Broadway one-man show after I saw him. Uh huh. So did you see it? I didn't. Yeah. I missed it. I missed it, too. Yeah. Um, OK, let's talk about Kate Blanchett. I think Kate Blanchett is of, um, to begin with, there is her undeniable idiosyncratic beauty. She yes. doesn't look like every beautiful actress. Yes. She very much has her own look. Um, I think her ability to become the character she plays mm -hmm. so that you're not sure, unlike a Julia Roberts movie, mm -hmm. you're not sure, well, wait, was that Kate Blanchett in the role, mm -hmm. is another aspect of her that makes her intriguing. Because I think that ability to sink into a character is becoming more rare. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of classical, theatrical ability. Mm -hmm. And she is, in fact, very involved with theater. Would you say she's like in the same class with Meryl Streep? Yes. I would, too. I would. I would. And I think the other, one other really interesting thing about her is the way she keeps her private life private. Yeah. Like I don't know one thing about her, actually, right. when come to think of it. And I've write, written about her twice and don't know a ton more. Uh-huh. And she said there's a certain grace there and a, yes. she's clearly an intelligent Very person. Very intelligent. Yes. Did you see um, Notes on a Scandal? Yes. Wasn't that incredible? Incredible. Um, what yeah. a, and what an interesting role, role and the way she played, played it. Played it, yeah. Um, okay, so the, the biggie, the 800-pound the gorilla is Marilyn Monroe. Right. Um, Marilyn Monroe, I think, is a national obsession. I know. And endless. I mean, we're still in it. Right after I wrote this very, very long New Yorker piece that took in 
about God knows how many new books. Mm -hmm. Many, many new books came out it's the next brilliant. year and the next year and the next year. Um, I think it's a mixture of glamour and vulnerability mm -hmm. that is so fascinating that she's partly a very put together package mm -hmm. with the glossy lips and the breathy voice and the beauty and the breasts and the, mm -hmm. and then there are all these glitches in mm -hmm. the presentation where you realize whether it was that she was always late or she didn't, she muffed her lines. Yeah. There was anguish that I think came through. Mm -hmm. And I think the notion of a sort of um, sad beauty, mm -hmm. sad, almost pinup An girl. An incredible sad background, right? She was a foster child. Foster child. Yeah. Mother was crazy, mm -hmm. in and out of institutions. Um, I think very, very lonely background where she fantasized her way into becoming a mm -hmm. celebrity, an actress. I think she also had a serious side. I know some people mock it, but I think she did have a very serious side. And you said that she truly loved the men she truly loved. Yes. And it wasn't, you know, there's this temptation to say that she was a bimbo and that right. she slept her way to the top. And, and actually, you, your take was that she really felt that, that she was a deeply feeling person. Yes. I think she was. Mm -hmm. I know after I wrote this piece, I wrote another piece based on her journals, her diaries came out. They're kind of chicken scratchings. She mm -hmm. writes what she wants to buy for dinner. She wants to become a hostess. Uh -huh. Then she writes notes on books she's reading. Uh -huh. She's an interesting, many-angled person. But what's more interesting is our interest in her. her. And that's where your essays are so brilliant, because Thank you're you. asking us to understand, like, what do you care so much about right. Marilyn Monroe? Like, my God, have we not covered this already? Right, um, right. But I think there might be something in common between our obsession with Marilyn Monroe and with Mike Tyson. Tyson, right? I agree. Right, because there's this child this protective maternal instinct that comes out on both of them? I like agree. they've been you abused or manipulated. You see the child in them. Yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah. I think it with Mike Tyson, I felt, because I felt strongly empathic, like uh -huh. the little boy that had been hurt. Sure, and it's not just his lisp. No, but not it, just it, his but lisp. But also, she has like very childlike very. characteristics, and her voice, voice is kind of little girlish, so right. it's sort that of weird, right? hushed little voice, yeah. Um, okay, how about Virginia Woolf? Virginia Woolf has been forever my literary passion. I first of all find her an astonishing, mm -hmm. astonishing writer on many levels, yeah. fiction, essays, um, just in terms of her style, um, her brilliance as a reader and as an observer. Mm -hmm. Although there were limitations, you know, she's been accused correctly of being a snob. Uh -huh. She sort of condescended to James Joyce. Uh -huh. I forgot what she called him, like smutty little man, something like that. Uh -huh. There were real. It was know, intellectual snobbery. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Also, the, some the degree most of cutting time. <laughs> Cut, the most cutting type, yeah. Also, some class snobbery, even though she was married to Leonard Wolf, mm -hmm. a Jewish man. She wrote in her diaries various somewhat anti-Semitic things about, even about his family. Um, but I think she was probably the leading woman intellectual of her day mm -hmm. in, a, in a time when women were still, as they continue to be, yeah. in my opinion, sort yeah. of kept a little to the side or um, and I've always loved her. And then there is obviously the suicide, which I think brings her suicide at age 59, which brings a dimension of the tragic, of the unrealized. Yes, right, which is also yeah. a factor in other people's stories. Right. Okay, the last one we have time for is uh, Scott and Zelda Fitzgerald. Um, not to make them all sound the same, because I don't mean to, but mm -hmm. I think they were a couple, once again, there was enormous glamorous overlay. Mm -hmm. They were the jazz age couple of the moment, dancing in fountains of champagne, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And then underneath it all began to crack. Yeah. 
I mean, so we're obsessed with this um, wounded dichotomy, icons. right? Yes. Just as you say on the cover, the wounded icons. I, I mean, think there's we're really a thread there. Yeah. Oh, you're so fun to talk to. Thank, Thank you, you so much for Thank coming. Thank you so much.